Hi, I'm Andrew Woodward, the founder of AeroGrow. I'd like to thank you for your purchase of the AeroGrow Genesis. If this is your first foray into the world of indoor growing, you are in for a fun, fascinating, and fruitful adventure. But stay with us for the entire video because in it, I'll be introducing you to the same principles used by professional indoor growers all over the world every single day. Armed with this knowledge, you'll be able to master not only this garden, but you'll be set up for success growing anything else that you want indoors. So thanks again for your purchase. Sit back, relax, enjoy this video, and know that you can grow like a pro. Okay, so there are basically two paths that you can go down when using your aerogrogenesis. Down the first path I call Grandma's Kitchen. And that's a simpler path. And what it's really good for is for people who just imagine growing one crop all the time. Let's say, for example, your thing is basil and you want to have basil all the time on your pizza. So for you, all you really need to do is figure out the recipe for basil and how to mix nutrient solution for that one crop and just do the same thing every single time. Now, for that type of person, I would not necessarily recommend following anything more complicated than the grandma's kitchen method. And we will cover that in the video. However, the other path that you can go down is what I call the arrow grow method. And in this method, what we do is introduce you to some of the core concepts used by growers every day in the indoor growing world. And we also introduce you to the use of this tool. It's called a five in one meter. This is one variety of it. There are many. This is one that we sell. But this meter, oh, by the way, and uh, you will be getting one of these for free since you bought this unit if you choose to, to uh, use this. And this unit really is the difference between growing using grandma's kitchen method and growing like a professional grower. And we'll be talking about all these concepts, but you need to really kind of decide for yourself, do you want to go down the simpler road and just rinse and repeat growing one thing? Or are you the type of person who wants to, for example, uh, switch it up? You want to grow peppers, one, hot peppers one time, like here, these are hot peppers here. Uh, one time and then you want to grow lettuce the next time and then maybe you want to grow tomatoes after that. For someone interest, interested in switching like that back and forth between crops, I would highly recommend going with the arrow grow method because it will make it much simpler for you. Uh, when you're trying to uh, keep track of the different levels of nutrients required by different plants because you keep switching between them, it's very difficult to do that successfully. It's really much more successful when you just fully embrace the professional methods that are used, which we'll show you, and use the tool of the trade uh, that you see here. And that makes it a much more pleasant experience. But we, like I said, we will cover both ways, and it's going to be a lot of fun regardless of which method you choose. So no pressure. <laughs> So the first thing that I'd like to tell you about is the very special offer that I have for people who buy the AeroGrow Genesis. And that is that if you look for this card inside of your unit, and there's a QR code here, you can scan this, go to the aerogrow.com website and sign up. Uh, just your name and address is all we need. And we'll send you a free meter. This is a pH meter. It also measures TDS, EC, salinity, and temperature. A five in one meter is a $60 value on Amazon and you're getting one for free. All you have to do is go to that site, go to that page, scan the code, fill it out and I'll send you one for free. And it's a really important part of this process. We can measure pH and EC, which are an important part of the process in growing. So grab your free meter and let's go. So as you can see, I've laid out all the parts that are included with the unit in front here. And I want to go over each of these pieces. Some of them you've already seen. This one is the bag we just looked at with the seed packet and the card, which you can use to uh, get your free meter. And then you have some seed starter cups. And there are either three or four of these. Sometimes they're provided with three. Sometimes they, uh, pro the manufacturer provides an extra cup. I'm not sure why, uh, but there will be enough for your seedlings in here. Either three, or, three cups is all you need, but there may be four. Uh, then there are the lids for the seedling cups. There will be four of those, either three or four of those. Then there are the small plastic cups, which after your seedlings have sprouted, you'll use those to protect them uh, as, they, as they grow for the next week or so. 
Then there, is, there are the sponges, which are contained in a bag. There are more than enough for your first grow season. You can buy more. I'll include uh, some information on this page on where you can purchase some more. And we also have some coming uh, very shortly into our inventory, which you'll be able to buy from us. So let's move on to the cups, or the baskets, rather. The baskets are uh, what you place inside of each of the grow chambers and then the sponges go inside of there, and there should be 12 of those. Then we have, of course, the all-important nutrient solution, which is, it's a dry powder, and we'll show you how to mix this as well. There's a video portion called Mixing Nutrient Solution, that I uh, believe is what it's called, and we'll show you how to do that. That's also in the kit. And last but not least is the power adapter, which plugs in actually the back of the unit here, you'll find the uh, small port on the bottom. And we're going to go over how to hook that up as well. So those are the components. I didn't mention it, but the, of course, the instruction manual, which is how you got here, is also included. And this uh, will have QR codes to all of the videos. They do all lead to the same page, so you can't get lost. So these are the parts that are included with your aerogrogenesis, and now let's take a look at how you actually assemble the unit for the first time. Assembly of your aerogrow is pretty straightforward, and we will be going through all the bits and pieces throughout this video. However, there are a few things I wanted to show you to make sure you have a smooth experience when you first take your aerogrow out of the box. The first thing is when you lift or lower the hood, please put one hand or at least a few fingers on the base and lift gently with your other hand, the hood, and when you put it down, do the same thing. But lift from the back, don't lift from the front. That'll put stress on it. So lift from the back where the pole is and you'll never have any problems. The second thing is, inside of your nutrient chamber, sometimes during shipping, this small rubber piece here, which aims the water, tends to come loose and it's just kinda wiggling around inside the tank here. So simply take that, place it back on the pump and make sure that it's pointed inwards towards the water so that it circulates it properly when it turns on. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is that normally there's a, a protective film on this control panel, which I've already peeled off in this case, but if you just grab the corner of it and peel it, you will have no trouble revealing that beautiful finish. So when you first receive it, it may look a bit dull. That's the protective film covering it. Simply remove that and it'll look brand new. The final thing is the water level indicator does have a tendency to wiggle itself loose during shipping and the parts will come apart. So in the next section, I'm going to show you how to reassemble this water level indicator should it have come apart during shipping. Now, I'm just going to show you how this works so you can reassemble it yourself if that happens. So what I do is uh, I'm just going to have to move the filler cup to show you this. I'm going to lift the lid to show you that this is just a slip in place type thing. And it has five little parts to it. First part is this cover cap on the bottom right there. And then there's the float inside with the red plastic straw pointing upwards. And then there's the tube. And then there's the clear dome on top. So you would simply insert the clear dome into the tube, insert the entire tube into the lid of the garden. Then you would insert the float with the straw facing up. You might have to wiggle a little bit to get it in there. And then, while preventing it from falling out, place the small retainer cap on the bottom there, and that's it. Then you can just push this back into place and uh, keep an eye on the minimum and maximum right there, the indicators, that'll keep it useful for you. Press that in, put the whole thing back in place. Voila, good to go. So let's talk about water. So tap water or municipal water uh, the, the water that comes out of your faucet is filtered, of course, by the municipality that you live in, but it's also altered. They add things like chlorine to the water in order to keep the water safe for human consumption. I'm not sure how safe that makes it for human consumption. Chlorine is not a particularly harmless chemical, but it's put in the municipal water supply and it's very harmful potentially to plants because plants are very sensitive. So what we want to do is avoid introducing chlorine to our plants. There are two ways to do that. You can either 
invest in a reverse osmosis water filtration system. They're not very expensive. They can be had on Amazon for about $150 to $200. They can be installed by the homeowner under your kitchen sink, uh, and that will remove most of everything from the water that you don't want, including chlorine and a lot of other nasties that you'd rather not be putting into your body. So the other option is that you can simply invest in these bottles of distilled water. So they're about a dollar from the grocery store and uh, they are very safe to use. It's distilled water, so it's perfectly pure. And then what we do is we add our nutrients to this water, turning it into nutrient solution, adjust the pH, and then that's what we feed our plants with. But this is probably your best bet if you're just getting started. Also because uh, the, the aerogogenesis fits 3.87 liters of water, which is just about one gallon. So one gallon's perfect for one unit. So if you pick up uh, some of this, do pick up several, because although you will be starting the unit out with one gallon of distilled water, in about a week, those plants will have used some water and you'll need to add some more to the tank. So pick up a couple of these and have them on hand. So what is the AeroGrow method? The AeroGrow method, stated simply, is a collection of tools and techniques that have been borrowed from the world of professional indoor growing. These are the tools and techniques that are considered the most essential for success when growing indoors. With AeroGrow, we've brought together these tools and techniques into a format that's more accessible, easier to understand, and more affordable for people who would like to achieve the same great results the pros do right at home. So what you see in front of you are a few of the tools that you will be using on a fairly regular basis if you're growing indoors without soil. Starting with measurement. Now, I really cannot overemphasize how important the ability to measure accurately is when you're doing indoor growing. Everything from being able to accurately measure the concentrates of your nutrient solution to being able to accurately measure what's happening inside the nutrient solution at any given moment to being able to measure pH, again, with your meter. All of these different forms of measurement are critical in indoor growing. So to start with, I would recommend that you pick up at some point some graduated cylinders on Amazon. I will provide some links in the description below. A 50 is great to have. It measures a little larger amount of liquid, which is great for larger amounts of this concentrate, like 20 or 30 milliliters at a time. This will be helpful. And also a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, because if, if you only need to measure a very small amount, the only way you can do that accurately is with a smaller graduated cylinder. If you're only measuring five milliliters, very difficult to measure five in one of the larger graduated cylinders. Very easy to measure five in one of the skinny, smaller graduated cylinders. So I would recommend those two as a start. Now, the meter we've spoken about, uh, you've either already received it or are on your way to receiving it or are about to send away for it. And it is a really critical tool to have in, in your uh, toolbox for indoor growing. Uh, there are other uses for this meter that I will talk about in other videos. But for now, just know that it's a gotta have. And again, it doesn't have to be ours, but it does have to be a pH meter and an EC meter because this meter, although it will measure five different things, the two we we're most concerned about with the AeroGrow method are the EC and the pH. Those two are critical. So if you are using another meter, a different meter, or one you already have, that's fine. Uh, as long as it has the EC feature and the pH feature, that's fine. So here we have the a pH up and down, which is really critical because every time you go to mix up your nutrient solution, the pH will be wildly off. I can just guarantee you that. So you will have to adjust the pH, which you've then measured with your meter. It's the very last step before you add the nutrient solution to the garden is you measure the pH, you adjust the pH, and then you add it to the garden. But this is available on Amazon. I'll provide another link below for this. But this you can buy from anybody. It doesn't matter who makes it. It's, I think, the same, literally the same chemical, regardless of uh, who you buy it from. And last but not least, the nutrient solution can be purchased from other manufacturers. It does not matter. But the one thing I want to tell you about is that these are nutrient salts. There's an A and a B. That's why there's an A and a B. These two work together. 
And nutrient salts are important to be using in this methodology because the meter is measuring electrical conductivity, which is provided by the salts. So they work together. The nutrient salts and the meter work together. So as long as you are purchasing a, an aeroponic or hydroponic A, B nutrient solution, full spectrum, you'll be fine. You may need to do some testing to get the concentrations correct, and, and we can help you through video with that. But uh, that will be uh, something we can talk more about in future videos. But again, I will provide a link below for a nutrient solution should you need it in the interim. Okay, growers, let's talk about seeds. Seeds are obviously the most important part of this process. The seeds that you are receiving, the five different seeds, are, in my opinion, fantastic. They are organic and um, they're, they're hybrids, they're award winners, they're known for growing well indoors. They're, they're, I have nothing bad to say about them. They're great seeds. But here's the thing you need to know. Each type of plant has a different nutritional requirement. It's very much like a tiger and a house cat are both cats, but when it comes time to feed them, they will have very different nutritional needs. They may be able to live next to each other, but not when it's feeding time. And the same thing is true for your plants. The, a red ember pepper, for example, which produces a fruit, a pepper, is going to have a much different nutritional profile than a buttercrunch lettuce, for example, which is just wispy leaves. So the red ember peppers need a lot more nutrients. The buttercrunch lettuce needs a lot less, much less nutrients. So the way we control that, there are a couple different things here, and this is, this is where it gets exciting. On the back of each of these seed packs is a tag. On this tag are two bits of information that for this product and these seeds are critical and it's all provided for you. The two pieces of information are the pH range and the EC or electrical conductivity. The pH range is the pH of the solution and that is important to control that. We'll get into that later. But the, the, the EC range is the most critical bit of information. Also, again, measurable with the meter, which you're of course going to order. And that is what changes from seed pack to seed. Well, the pH and the EC change from seed pack to seed pack based on the individual requirements of that plant. So what that means is I would recommend not necessarily mixing any two of these plants in a single grow session. I would recommend, even though there are 12 pods, pick one type of plant that you want to focus on for each grow cycle and grow that because then you can very specifically control the needs that that plant has by measuring the EC and the pH and giving that plant exactly what it wants for its entire grow cycle. Now, feel free to experiment as your garden. If you would like to combine them and experiment with nutrient levels and pH and whatever else you want, go ahead and go for it. But this is a system, the, the AeroGrow system of growing is, has been tried here, it's been tested and it's known to work well. And you won't go wrong if you follow the instructions of the AeroGrow methodology. So that's how the seeds work. And the next step, of course, is to prepare your sponges for your first seeds. And let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that you've decided which seeds you want to plant and you've decided how many of them you want to plant, it's time to get your sponges ready. In this case, I have decided that I want to plant five bib lettuce plants in this unit. Okay, even though there are 12 pods, I'm only going to plant five plants because if you look at bib lettuce right here, it's a very bushy plant. It wants to go big. So if I were to put 12 plants in here, there wouldn't be any space for them to grow. So what I do with bib lettuce is I choose five or six pods to use for bib lettuce. So that's what I'm gonna do. I will plant six bib lettuce pods today. And I have the seeds in this little dish right here. And to get started, I'll simply take out six, because I only need six, right? Six of these uh, sponges, grow sponges. And they are made out of a type of peat moss. It's all organic. It's all completely edible and safe. Uh, these get placed into some water. Again, this is distilled water or reverse osmosis. Do not use tap water. Please don't use tap water. 
So fill that up a little more. And then I'm just gonna pop those in there and those will need to sit for about 10 minutes to fully expand and to uh, achieve their final size. So let them sit for 10 minutes and through the magic of television, we'll be right back. All right, so we've given our sponges a few minutes to soak and they're nice and full of water. That's just how we want them. And as I said before, I've decided to plant six of the butter crunch lettuce seeds, which I have in a little container here. And I think it's helpful to use a small toothpick when you're doing this. And all you do is just dip it in the water and pick up a seed, a single seed. It'll kind of stick to the end of the toothpick. It's really helpful. And then you just place it inside of the sponge. So what we do first is we place four sponges in here. And you'll see that they fit perfectly in these little containers. Two, three, and four. And then for the next container, we just have two. I'll place those opposite. No particular reason. I just like everything to have a little space. Move that to the side. Okay, now what we will do is we'll put a single seed inside of each one of these sponges. I'm going to pick one up. Now well, these are a little bigger. They're not sticking so well. Oh, there we go. Single seed. And then here. And you want to place the seed as far down in there as you can get it. It needs to stay wet in order to germinate. So you need to get it way down in there where it's nice and dark and wet. And keep your eye on it because sometimes they'll fly away on you or they'll fall off of the toothpick. And just keep an eye on it. That's fine. Okay, two more. Also just, you know, <laughs> I guess it goes without saying, keep an eye on where you are uh, as far as which ones have a seed in it and which ones do not because you really don't want more than one seed per sponge. It's tempting to think, yeah, what if one doesn't germinate? But these are very high germination rates for these seeds. They're very high quality. So you don't have any trouble there. Uh, you, you should be germinating fine. So once you're done with the seeding, you just take a cover and it'll feel strange, but believe it or not, these covers fit inside the lip of the container. So you just kind of kind of finagle it a little bit, be gentle. But once it's on there, it's a really tight seal. It's a nice tight seal and it will keep in the moisture, which is critical right at this point. And after about three, four days, five days, it varies depending on temperature and some other factors. But after a few days, you will see the sprouts coming up. And at that point, we can transfer them to the sponges. So for the next four or five days, what you wanna do is keep these in a warm, fairly bright place. And one thing I do suggest is place them on the unit, wherever you're gonna have your unit set up, just place these right on the garden, on the top of the garden here, and turn on the light. I'll show you that next. And just let those sit for about four or five days. And once you see the sprouts, we're ready to go to the next step, which I will show you now. So let's say you'd like to use your AeroGrow Genesis as a light source for your germination process. That's totally fine, but do remember one thing. There's an electric water pump inside the tank here, and it needs water in order to pump. So if you try to run this without water in it, it'll make a terrible screeching noise that I hope you never hear. But all you have to do to overcome that is turn the unit around, and you will see that there is a plug right here. This plug in the back is for the pump. Unplug that, and you're done. Now you can use your AeroGrow Garden as just a light source during germination. However, don't forget to plug in the pump again before you go to use the garden for real. Now I'm just gonna plug in the power in the back and then I'll press the power button. Voila, 24 watts of perfect lighting to help you in your germination process. So what you're seeing here are seedlings at different stages of growth. These seedlings here on your left are those that were planted in the video five days ago. So these are five days old. They're just starting to peek out of the sponges. I see a bit of green, but I do not actually see any leaves yet. 
it's okay to plant these in the garden at this point. That's fine. As long as you can see some green and you can see that they're healthy and on their way and that they've fully sprouted, it's time to go and plant them into the garden. Now, these seedlings represent uh, seedlings that are about 10 to 12 days old. So these actually are a bit overgrown for these containers. These should have been transplanted about two or three days ago. So that's just to give you an idea. Any time uh, after this, but before this, <laughs> is, a, is a good time to plant in the final garden. And that's what we'll do now. All right, so what we have here is nutrient solution that's been prepared one of two ways uh, either using the teaspoon measurements or using the meter for as instructed in the uh, preparing nutrient solution video we have some seedlings that are between 5 to 12 days old they look somewhere in between this level of growth between just popping out of the sponge and about three quarters of an inch tall and we have a completely empty aerogrow genesis ready to go so what we're going to do is we're going to take our nutrient solution, we're going to pour it into the unit, completely filling it, because as you remember, this unit fits about one gallon of water, just about exactly. It's just under four liters, and four liters uh, in imperial measurements, it works out to be just about one gallon. So once that's in, the motor, if you remember, is now safe because it's now submerged under water. So as soon as I'm done with this, we'll go ahead and we'll plug the motor back in, which we unplugged to let the light run on its own for the last week. And then we will have a fully functional unit. And as you can see, the float is starting to go up now. See it popping up there, the little red, little red straw. Yep, there we go. And she's full. So now we simply take the unit, and I just wanted to show you turning this around to plug the, the pump back in. Simply take this cord here, plug that back in, good to go. Now the light and the pump will be functional. So then we can plug the unit back in. I'm not going to turn on the light because that will throw the lighting off for this demonstration, but uh, you can assume now that it can be turned on by hitting that button to turn the light on. And what we're going to do is very simple. We're just going to take each one of these seedlings and place it in a basket. And remember, we're only planting six uh, seedlings today, so we're going to space them out. And I'm only going to show you four in the interest of time, but you would simply take them and place them out space them out rather throughout the garden you know just any arrangement that seems to make sense to you there are really no rules about that uh, and then we go like that oh and also something else i want to show you here if you can notice that let's see if i can show this a little better there is a tap root on this on this seedling here if you can see that on the mat here that's an example of a very healthy taproot. A taproot is the first root that comes out of a plant. It's the longest. It goes all the way down into the ground, if this were growing in the ground. And in this case, it'll sit the farthest into the solution because it's the longest root so far. And what I wanted to show you is how healthy and white and beautiful that looks. And that is what you want to see at any time with the roots in your unit. You want them to be nice and bright and healthy and white. And that's a good sign. So good. We're doing okay. Put that in there. Be very careful with the taproot too. Try your very best not to tear it or break it. It's very important for the plant to maintain that taproot. Like that, see that taproot? I don't know if you can see that on camera. I'm being very careful. Place that in there. And that's it for the plants. Now to take up the extra space, we're going to fill the rest of these with baskets and then we're gonna place on the caps and we'll show you that next. So now we have our seedlings planted, we have our solution in the tank, and we now need to cover the rest of these holes. And the reason we do that is twofold. First of all, we don't want too much of the water to escape uh, through evaporation. We wanna to try to keep as much of that in the tank as possible. And the second reason obviously is just to keep other objects from entering the tank. So we do want to cover these holes. And the way we do that is we simply install the rest of the baskets. In fact, I'll turn the light on now so you can see this bit more clearly. Install the rest of the baskets. 
And then I always try to keep these relatively neat. I'm a little funny that way. There we go. And put those in like that. And then we are simply going to take some of these dome caps, which normally, okay, at this point, if your seedlings are still very young like this, if you choose to, if they look very delicate or like they might be a little underage, simply stick a cap on there to maintain the moisture level inside of that dome. That's what these are actually for. This is the original intention. Uh, I use them also to prevent evaporation, but really they are to protect the young seedlings. But if your seedlings are maybe a half an inch, three quarters of an inch high like this one here, there's really no need for a dome cap. All you're going to be doing is the plant will be hitting the top of the dome cap, and that's just silly, so you don't need to do that. Uh, so it's just for this intermediate stage that we have these caps and for preventing evaporation. So this is all I do. I just place these on the unused ports, the unused pods, and uh, that's it that will prevent evaporation. So now we have a unit that is fully assembled and running. So this will be allowed to run on its own and cycle. It will turn on the pump. The, uh, the water pump will turn on for 15 minutes every 45 minutes automatically, whether the light is on or not. And the light will cycle between 12 hours on and 12 hours off the moment you hit the button to turn it on. 12 hours from then, it will turn off. That's how that works. All right, so now it's time to mix up our first batch of nutrient solution. Okay, so the first step is to mix up our nutrient solution bottles, our part A and our part B. So very simply, we take the cap off of each one, and then there's a second pour cap where, where, with a little hole in the top. Take that cap off as well. And you'll notice that there's a small covering inside there. Take a little screwdriver or knife or whatever you have handy and just pry that cover out there and let's get rid of that do the same for the other bottle pop the top and then unscrew the second cap remove the cover move the cover set the cap back down okay now Going to add the water to the containers. Now on the side of the container, actually on the corner of the container, you'll see that there's a scale of markings and you want to fill it to the very top, being as accurate as you can. It's really important to be accurate with these bottles because this is a highly concentrated solution when you're finished, but we need it to be concentrated at the right level. So fill it up to that top with some distilled water and to make the, uh, the powder dissolve a bit faster, you can heat the water up just a little bit. Again, distilled water, nothing else other than reverse osmosis or distilled. You can heat it up to make it go a bit faster, but it's not strictly necessary. And then you're just going to fill it up to that top mark. I'll try to be quick here. Bloop, 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 to the top. Right to the line. Perfect. Put the cap back on. Now, using your finger, cover the top, shake it just a few times, just like that. Then replace the cap and let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes is probably good enough. Now we'll do the same for the B bottle. See our markings there. Right up to the top, just like that. Replace the cap, finger on the top, shake, that's it. Replace the cap. Let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, and that is it. Using the AeroGrow method to make your nutrient solution consists of five unique steps. Step one, we look at the back of the packet to obtain the information that we need to make our solution. Step two, calculate how much nutrient concentrate is required to reach our target EC as indicated on the packet. Step three, add the nutrient solution slightly less than is needed so the meter can be used to refine it. Step four, measure the pH and adjust it up or down until you hit the target. Step five, label the bottle so nobody drinks it. Let's get started. 
All right, so we are finally ready to make some nutrient solution using the AeroGrow method. So if you remember from step one, it was to look at the back of your seed packet, doesn't matter which one, and find the information in the back. It is also, by the way, I should mention, same information is contained on your cheat sheet. But for now, let's just talk about the packet. So you'll see there's the EC and the pH are listed there. And now for step two, use your cheat sheet to find out how much of the recommended solution you will need in order to achieve that target EC. So for red ember peppers, which we're doing today, red ember peppers, are it's recommended for the growth stage that you target an EC of 2,000 to 2,500. You'll also see there that it says in order to achieve that level, you will need 25 milliliters of A and 25 milliliters of B. So that is what we will do. Now keep in mind that the 25 milliliters of A and B will get us close to the target. It, it should not send us over. If it does send us over the target, it means that my nutrient solution concentrate was not mixed properly. So once we get it near the target, we're then going to test it and refine it until we reach our final target level of 2000. And then we have our solution ready for pH adjustment. So right now, step three is add the nutrient solution that's recommended. So whoops, let me start with A instead of B, just for the camera. And remember, keep your caps separate uh, so that they don't get contaminated. And, oh yeah, you know what? We will use the cap for this, actually. Remember that your cap has markings on the top. Normally, I do here in the lab, I use these graduated cylinders, but the cap does have milliliter markings on it that are very useful when you're mixing up nutrient solutions. So simply use that for now, I'll do the same. And we're going to pour 15 into here. That's the maximum you can pour into the cup. I'll lower this for the camera here. 15. Now I'm not eye level with this, so my measurement may be a little bit off. You do want to be eye level typically when you're measuring, but I'll do the best I can. Whoop, wait, before I start, let me show you this. Top tip. These bottles are filled almost to the top every single time you buy them at the store. I don't know how they even pull that off, but there are all the way to the top. So what I like to do is I'll just take a little bit of that water out of the bottle just to give myself some room so I have some place to actually put the concentrate. Otherwise, it'll be flowing over the top and your measurements will be off and everything will just go sideways. So we take our 15 milliliters, pour that in. We'll take another 15 because we need 30, right? All right. Sorry, we need 25. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so we're going for 25 milliliters of A. Before I make a mistake here, oh boy, I was almost ready to make a mistake there. Okay, so we have 10 more of A, so that gives us 25. All right. And then, okay, let's keep our cap together with the bottle. And then we are going to add 25 of B. All right, add 15 first here. 15, and 10 more. All right. So now we have exactly 25 milliliters of A and 25 milliliters of B in this bottle. Give it a little shake. All right, and then we are going to take a test. We'll put our meter into EC mode. Let's see, we are in EC mode, that's good. All right, and then let's see what we have. Okay, so we got to, that's good, that's good. We got to about 1630 on our first attempt here. I did put in a bit less than uh, I, I normally would. Uh, I couldn't really see it uh, at eye level here. So that's pretty good. Now what we can do is we can adjust this level up until we reach our target of 2000. So we need to go about another 300 uh, micro siemens per centimeter to reach our target. So I would say 
that we are going to, if we know that five milliliters of A and five milliliters of B will give us a concentration of 400 microsiemens, that's a little bit more than we actually need. So I would say three milliliters of A and three milliliters of B should be just about right. Let me see how close I can get this. All right, that's off the top of my head, but we'll see how good I am here. All right, let's put in three. Now, all I'm doing here, I'm not being fancy. I'm really just doing this math in my head, and I'm trying to come close. That's all I'm doing. Okay, three. And now, because I have this graduated cylinder that's so accurate, I can go ahead, add my three, and then add another three directly in the same batch here until I reach six. And then I don't have to mix twice. I can just mix once and throw it on in there. Okay. Three and three. There we go. Now, let's see how I did. All right. Put the did back on here. Give it a little shaky shaky. All right. Just check this. All right, this nutrient solution is where we need it to be and ready for pH balancing. All right, so for step four, we are measuring the pH of our new solution. And we know from our seed packet, we need to be between six and 6.5. So I'll just put my meter into pH mode, put it into the liquid and let's see what we have, 6.0. Okay, so we are right on the line there. So what I'm gonna do is I would rather that be a bit higher. So I'm just gonna put in a few drops of the pH up and we'll see how that helps us. So if I just put in a few drops here, about 15 drops that was. Okay, that may be more than a few, but you get the idea. You do wanna go slowly with this though because most of your adjusting will probably not be that dramatic. It will probably just be going up or down a few points. And to do that, you only need a small amount of the pH up or down to really move the needle, so to speak. So let's see what we have now. Yes, now we're good. Okay, so we're up at 6.24, more or less. That's 6.3, yeah, no, that's fine. I'm totally happy with that. So with that being done, this nutrient solution is ready to go. It is 2000, it has an EC of 2000 and it has a pH of 6.2 and it is ready to go for early growth stage red ember peppers. Now the last step, step five, very important, right on the bottle, somewhere where it will be very visible, what it is. So say uh, peppers, 2000, U.S. and do not drink. That's pretty important. So with that, you have made your first nutrient solution. All right, so the final thing that we will be covering in this video is the grandma's kitchen method for preparing nutrient solution. Now, this, as I said before, is great for somebody who just wants to grow basil or lettuce or one crop at a time and they just want to rinse and repeat and do that forever and ever. And that's fine. The difference is that you have no control over your pH and you have very little control over the accuracy of your nutrient solution. You kind of have to hope that you mixed it correctly and hope that you're measuring correctly. But here's how you do it. Very simple. Let's say we are mixing up uh, for butter crunch lettuce. Uh, we want some starter solution, which is 500 to 750 micro siemens. And it tells us that we should use one teaspoon plus 10 drops of A and one teaspoon plus 10 drops of B. Perfect. That's all we have to do is measure it and add it to the jar. Keep in mind, you have two ways to measure this. You can either use a teaspoon from your kitchen, and I would recommend also using a teaspoon that's marked for both imperial, as in one teaspoon, and also marked for the metric equivalent, which is five milliliters. And that just means it's more accurate. So you can use this, or you can use the cap of your nutrient solution concentrate, which also has measures for five, 10, 15 milliliters. So all you would do is, in fact, we'll use the cap this time. We'll simply take the cap and we'll take the top off the water. We will add our one 
teaspoon, which is five milliliters. Now this won't be terribly accurate because I can't be eye level with it because of the camera, but I'll put five of A, oops, and then we will put five of B. And it'll be accurate enough for the demonstration, but you do want to be as accurate as possible when you're doing this at home. Five milliliters of B. Now, plus 10 drops, right, of B and A, or A and B. So I'm going to go ahead and add 10 more drops. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I'll go back to A and add those 10 drops, which I could have done right up front. I just didn't, didn't think to do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, that is it. All you do now is replace the lid, give it a little shake. You're done. So that's it. You did it. You reached the end of the startup video for the AeroGrow Genesis and you reached the beginning of the Indoor Grow Adventure. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us through the contact page on the AeroGrow website. And reach out directly through YouTube if you want. Let us know how we can make some videos that may directly address your questions. And do keep an eye on the other videos coming out in 2023 from AeroGrow because we'll be covering all sorts of topics with indoor growing as well as ways to optimize your experience with the AeroGrow that you already own. So with that, I want to say thank you again for your purchase. Thank you for joining us for this video. And at AeroGrow, we want you to know that you can grow like a pro.